Lucy Surrey. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, a leading surgeon from Guildford who's putting his own money into research into better treatment for millions of varicose vein sufferers. He's with me in the studio very shortly. Yes. Now, John, I've got a man in the studio with me who in a moment is going to check to see whether I've got varicose veins. I, I, oh. Obviously, we're in a different studio to you. I probably have, yeah. <laughs> I don't know quite... Well, you know, there's loads of veins. and Because and when you get stressed and sort of working on a microphone and scrunching bits up, and you're perhaps holding the pen a bit tighter. There's going to be veins appearing, aren't there? Right. You've uh, got them on the back of your hands at the moment, haven't you? Well, uh, look, I've got the expert here. I, I, I'll give you the proper introduction in a moment, Mark. But <laughs> can, can you see the veins more at certain times? Uh, yes, but those aren't pathological ones. So. Ah, OK. So there, you, so there you are. I think, John, at that point, <laughs> we should... Uh, I'm just you, pathological. <laughs> yes, we should let you go at that point. <laughs> BBC Surrey with Mark Carter. Yeah, 19 minutes straight. Serious story this, actually. A leading surgeon from Guildford says the NHS has entered a false economy by withdrawing find, uh, funding for treating varicose veins. 40% of us will suffer with them, and the problem isn't just cosmetic. Mark Whiteley was in charge of the vascular unit of the Royal Surrey County Hospital for many years, but he's now only able to operate privately because of NHS funding cuts. But unlike some private doctors, he's not buying fast cars with his money. He's literally putting it into medical research. Thank you for coming in to see us this morning. Um, so, so you really did want to stay, I guess, in the NHS. That was kind of your ambition. Yeah, good warning there, Mark. Yes, I, I was an academic at Oxford University, having trained at Barts. And my one thing was really to become a professor. That was what I wanted to do. And I was appointed quite young at the Royal Surrey. And so we brought in all the vein research to the Royal Surrey. And um, I really, over the last first few years... Uh, from 1999 onwards, we were the first. Uh, I was the first person in the UK to do this new thing called venous closure. Mm -hmm. Then we went on to all this new keyhole vein surgery, and that's led us to realise that varicose veins aren't the cosmetic thing we used to think they were. We now we know that if you don't fix them, you can get leg ulcers in some people. We know if you've got leg ulcers, we can cure them. They're all linked with varicose veins, you see. So I wanted to build a world famous centre at the Royal Surrey County Hospital for veins. Unfortunately, it's not so much, I'm not really getting at the NHS saying we can't afford it because the private health insurance companies either can't afford it, it's, there's just too many people with the condition. And so what's happening is they have to concentrate on cancers and other things. So for me, having become world famous for the techniques I'm doing and keeping at the head of my field, what it meant we had to do is we went had to find our own funding. So we ended up setting up the Whiteley Clinic in the research park. And then what we do now, we have two PhD students. We take on medical students or people who want to become medical students. And as part of our way forward, trying to give the best for our patients, we continually audit our results. We even just last night, I actually got a new contract with a new company that's got a new device right. to treat veins even better and that will come to Guildford and we'll be doing through the university or the histology to prove whether it works or not. Yes, because I think everybody's heard of varicose veins and, and most of us, myself included, would think well, th they're unsightly but but we, I don't think many of us would necessarily realise that there was anything more than a cosmetic issue. This is the big problem. It's, it, it goes right back to the history of medicine. The trouble with medicine is doctors back 3,000 years ago used to just name things that they saw. So if you had a stroke that affected your right hand, the god had struck you down, so that was the right hand. Now we know it's not that. Now we know it's your left brain that's got a clot or a bleed. So once you actually understand the underlying bits, you change the name. The trouble is varicose veins haven't moved on. Varicose veins mean lumpy veins. That's mm. what they are. Varicose means lumpy. And the cause of that is that the valves aren't working. So your circulation on the venous side, not your heart side, but the venous side isn't working. Blood is not getting out of your leg and it's falling down, causing inflammation, which can cause bleeds, clots, leg ulcers. If you're lucky, that falling down blood stretches the veins and you see it, and half the people with the problem do see it, that's called varicose veins, mm. but the other half don't see it, and they've got what's called hidden varicose veins or venous incompetence. Those people don't even know they've got a problem unless they start getting aching of their legs, they start getting itching of their legs, they've got some swelling, and the skin damage starts happening. You start seeing redness and brownness, and if you still don't fix it, you get leg ulcers. And the problem is the education in the medical fraternity is such that if you go to your general practitioner or you go to your um, dermatologist or even a nurse and say, look at my legs, you know, I've got some redness there itching, rather than getting a vein duplex ultrasound to say, have you got varicose veins, you usually just get given some creams or some stockings. And that, of course, just procrastinates. Your problem is just going to get worse. So the problem is it's, they're called varicose veins because that's what you can see in some people. But it means that it sort of really, it, it takes away the severity of the problem because it's got the wrong name, really. 
Is it just women who get varicose veins? That's very interesting because up until recently we thought it was and then in 1999 there was some very good research that showed that men get them just as commonly as women and probably slightly more commonly. It's just that us men, when we get something wrong with us, we don't ask for help. <laughs> but <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the case with everything? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, okay, so well, let, 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 let's. Um, so in, in, in the interest of a bit of an experiment here, you are going to come around to here over to the other side of the desk and you're just going to take a look at my lovely legs. I will do. They are the best part of my body, you know, and I'm very at all. Uh, uh, so, I, I, now I don't need to hopefully drop my trousers, I can just raise my trouser leg. Right, okay. Have a look at that fine specimen there. Yeah. What can you see? Uh, there's actually, there is a small vein there. Oh, for goodness yeah. sake. <laughs> Hang on, go on, yes. That you, have a, you have a prominent vein there. Yes. Uh, can you stand up? Can I stand yeah, up? Yeah, I can stand up. When we stand up, we get the full gravity. There's no, there's no obvious varicose vein on that side. Right, OK, you want to look at the other leg yes, now? Oh dear, OK, right. Oh dear. How are you going to do the rest of the staff on your way out as well, just to humiliate them? Thank you, yes. There you are. Excellent. There's no obvious varicose veins, and more importantly, there's no swelling of the ankle. There's no red stains or browns. OK, so uh, so overall, I'm looking pretty OK, but then uh, then what, what you would recommend, presumably, is that the only way you would know for sure is what, through some sort of scan? Yeah, so what, what we do is, if you have absolutely no symptoms at all, and your legs are fine, then you don't need anything done at all, because obviously 60% of people have got perfect legs. Yeah. If you've got varicose veins or thread veins or anything you can see, you definitely need a scan. And if you think something's going wrong, if your legs swell or you've got some aching in your legs or you're starting to get some itching then the only way you can see it is a scan no doctor or nurse can ever look at your legs and say you haven't got varicose veins uh, a question here from the producer of the show are you more likely to get varicose veins if you're tall which i am that's a really good question the answer is no it's right. who your mum and dad are but if you are taller and you have venous reflux disease in other words the cause of varicose veins then they're likely to get worse quicker okay uh so uh, in terms of cost if people are if, you know, looking to, to explore this further, obviously you're, the, the nature of your business now for the reasons you've explained, you're private. I mean, is it an expensive procedure to undertake? Any medical procedure that's done properly is going to have a cost to it. There are a lot of places that offer free this and free that. The trouble is if it's free, it usually means that they've got cut price equipment or for somewhere, somewhere that's lo losing money. It doesn't make sense. If you want a venous duplex ultrasound scan, that's several hundred pounds because the people are highly skilled to do it and the cost of the equipment itself is over £100,000 sure. just to get the equipment in but the good thing is it tells you the whole answer and it's not like the old things where you used to have needles and um, x-rays so it's very safe now and are very easy to do and like anything eventually the cost will come down with these sort of things they, they tend to happen don't they well, that's to an extent that's true, and all the latest things that we use, endovenous laser, radiofrequency, foam sclerotherapy, they've all hit a, probably the lowest they're going to get for a while because some of the new techniques, like the super glue that we're using now to glue veins, yeah. and there's a new technique that's coming out on top of that, they're actually probably going to be more expensive again. Right. So the difficulty with it is, is as technology goes, it's like computers. If you have yesterday's technology, yes, it does come down, but if you go on to the latest things, it's actually the, the cost of development is still high. Mark, good luck with your research and, and the ongoing work that you do there, and uh, thank you for coming in and uh, looking at my legs this morning as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> very good to see you. Right, 7.48, here's an update on the headlines with Peter.